Hey everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day. We have a very interesting topic to talk about today, and unless you've been living under a rock, pun intended, you've probably heard of it hundreds of times before. Timer resolution left thousands wondering whether it does anything or not, while some felt utter despair for the YouTube optimization community. Timer resolution. Timer resolution. Timer resolution. Timer resolution. Timer resolution. Timer resolution. This is gonna make your game feel crazy right after. Okay, you get the point. But the real question is, does it work? We've all seen the videos promising you zero delay, no input lag, FPS boosts, and whatnot, but I haven't seen once in my life someone that shows benchmarks along with their claims. It does split your input delay in half, so yeah. So yeah, I remember 30 years ago when I was a little baby, my daddy told me, Hey, timer resolution doesn't work. Don't be fooled by all of these YouTubers when you grow up. But all these people kept telling me otherwise. So, being as fed up as all of you are, I was unsatisfied with the usual, trust me bro, it feels better, and decided to test it myself and share it with you guys. But what is timer resolution? Well, in short, it defines the frequency of timer interrupts and the accuracy of timing events within a computer system. And unsurprisingly, a lower timer resolution allows for more precise time measurements, which is actually the reason why Lucas Hale created the app in the first place. And to help you visualize his problem that gave birth to timer resolution, I made a little diagram for you. Basically, he needed his app to run every 5 milliseconds, but it was held back by the system timer which was updating every 15 milliseconds instead. He noticed opening the media player instantly made the timer update more frequently, which in turn allowed his program to run as intended. And since he realized that process was too tedious and inconvenient, the timer resolution app was born. But enough story time for now. The question is, will it give us an FPS boost and input lag decrease or not? Well, yes and no. Maybe or maybe not. But jokes aside, if we were back in the early 2000s where some games were not requesting a 1 millisecond timer and were leaving you in the dust with 15 milliseconds delay, you would probably feel a difference. And here's a post by Zoicware who gave his two cents on the topic. And even if you say he might be wrong, here's how timer resolution would work in theory. Following the logic of Lucas Hale, if you're running an older operating system or are playing a game that doesn't request a lower timer resolution, take for example Counter-Strike 1.6 on Windows XP, then you'll be stuck with the 15.6 millisecond timer and would probably feel a difference by using his app. However, on modern Windows operating systems like 10 and 11, most, if not all, recent games will request a timer resolution of 1 millisecond. And while all these terms that you heard in some other timer resolution guides, like deltas, sleep, and standard deviation might sound super smart to you, they most likely will have absolutely no effect on how your game performs. And even if you see an FPS difference, it will only be visual due to the timer you just messed up, and you also run the risk of desynchronizing your game, let alone the fact that the benchmark script will produce a different quote-unquote best performing timer resolution value every time you run it. We also ran this on a few more computers and saw the same behavior every single time. But with this out the way, does that mean you're just getting finessed by these so-called tweakers while they pocket the cash and you're left with a placebo pill that's hard to swallow? <laughs> well, I guess we're about to find out. We followed the most popular timer resolution guides step by step so we can test it for ourselves and see if it actually makes a difference. So in this one, I got a really good banger video for you guys that's gonna make your game feel crazy right after. I'm not too sure about my game, but I'm already feeling crazy just by watching this video. Anywho, we did all of this, pulled out our super secret tech latency analyzer, and began testing these banger tweaks. We tested 10 of the most popular shooter games where latency really matters, including Fortnite, CS2, Valorant, and many more which will be shown on the screen now. The three metrics we tested were FPS, end-to-end -end latency, also known as input lag, and driver latency, which many people confuse with actual input lag and it doesn't matter as much as you might think. Do you know what really matters though? This segue to our sponsor. That's you! None of this would be possible without your support, and if you'd like to help us further, please like and subscribe, and also check out these new member perks by clicking the join button under the video. Thank you. But without wasting a single microsecond more, let's jump straight into the results. We saw some promising results in PUBG, which was surprising considering my skepticism towards using timer resolution for gaming. The FPS and latency difference was also negligible, but hey, it's definitely better than nothing. 
In Destiny 2, we're back to virtually nothing, with the benchmark showing results of 1.7% FPS increase on the 1% lows and 2% decrease in input lag. We also added the finals to the mix, since some of you wanted to see it included in our benchmarks. But, yet again, results were nothing to be excited about. With 2.6% FPS increase and 2.1% lower latency, we're definitely not swaying our input delay in half, as they say. Rainbow Six Siege was no exception either, and we saw absolutely no difference in average FPS and latency. However, there was a small bump of 3.8% in the 1% lows. Which is, I guess, something at least. But hey, no regrets. Moving on to the most badly optimized game after the remake of Silent Hill 2, in my opinion, aka Delta Force. Here we saw nearly 4% difference in the 1% lows and about the same decrease in input lag, which is actually the second best results we've got so far after PUBG. But now let's move on to the next one. In Apex Legends, there was absolutely zero real difference except for the five extra FPS on the 1% lows, while on Marvel Rivals, we saw an even smaller difference of only 1% in average FPS and 0.7% in input delay. But then something weird happened and the tables have turned. In Valorant, there was a 2.7% input lag increase and 4.1% less FPS on the 1% lows. Then a similar thing happened in Fortnite, where we saw a slightly increased input latency when using a custom timer resolution value of 0.506 milliseconds. And lastly, in Counter-Strike 2, there was a 3% increase in the 1% lows, while input lag and average FPS decreased by about 0.6% and 1% respectively. We also ran these tests on multiple older computers, which made little to no difference when running modern games on operating systems like Windows 10 and 11. So what's the conclusion? Well, it's really not that hard to tell that the difference was close to none, even though we still got an average of 0.7% decrease in input lag and up to 1% FPS boost. So will you be able to feel the difference? Most likely not, even if you're a professional player. And if you still want to use it, that's fine. Just have in mind you risk messing your game up for an insubstantial amount of frames and input delay. Just please don't expect your input lag to be cut in half or any of the placebo claims that some gurus are making. And if you're tired of recycled tweaks from 2008 and love PC optimization and myth-busting content, please join our Discord, leave a like, subscribe, and send this video to someone who's still using timer resolution in 2025. That's all for today's video. Let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments down below, and we'll make this a series if you guys want to see it happen. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know and I'll do my best to get them out to you. Thanks for watching, love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.